Assalamu alaikum. So, O-level students and IGCSE students, you guys have a big day tomorrow. You guys have your final math exam. And uh, a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. And obviously, I wanted to wish you guys the best of luck. But before that, uh, as always, before you go to sleep, just make sure that you do a quick stationary check. In fact, you can do that right now. Pause this video, do a stationary check. Make sure that you have your pencil, scale, razor, sharpener, calculator, tracing paper. Ideally, you should have two calculators, but if you don't have them right now, no need to panic. Uh, just stick to one and uh, a good at this point a good idea would be to just completely disconnect yourself from social media you know i know there there may be uh, news about the paper being difficult or maybe uh, the threshold being high or stuff like that but all that is not under your control okay so just completely disconnect yourself from social media uh, no need to discuss what's going to happen tomorrow because as always as you know as i mentioned multiple times it's not under your control until you see the paper okay so you don't know what's going to happen until you see the paper so uh, until then it's it's best that you completely disconnect yourself and uh, get enough sleep because math paper 2 let me tell you is a mentally draining paper you need a you, you need a fully functioning brain and uh, sometimes for some questions you really have to think hard before you can sort of plan your answer and uh, get before you can even get started before you can even uh, do the first set of working so you really have to plan your answer and for that you need a fully functioning brain now having said that be mentally prepared for a couple of difficult questions there will be some challenging questions so don't let those challenging questions dictate how you perform in the entire paper just leave those for the very end and no matter how difficult the paper is there will always be some easy questions so just make sure that you scan the paper and you do the easy questions first you know there are questions that require just simple algebraic manipulation there are questions that just require to plug in values in variables and find the answer there may be simultaneous equations there may be uh, some questions related to polygons where you just have to use a simple formula and uh, there's not a lot of thinking that's required and uh, just like that there may be some questions where you have to just use your calculator to get the answer so do those questions first questions that don't require you to think so that you can save that energy for the very end and uh, once you're done with that then you will have more time for the difficult questions and you know you'll feel good about the fact that now that you've secured like secured like uh, 20, 30 40 marks you, you will feel confident and once you approach something more confidently you're likely to do well in it okay now check as you go along do you will not have time towards the end don't think that you will have time towards the end because and even if you do have time towards the end you it will take you a while to sort of re-familiarize yourself as to what you've done in the question okay why did i multiply this by two why did i divide this by two so you'll have to do all of that so it's best that you check as you go along okay i'm sorry for the background noise um, then uh, revise all the relevant conversions you know kilometer meter volumes area and lengths okay and uh, just watch out for a couple of things that you need to watch out for is you know when you're solving an inequality if you multiply both sides by minus remember to flip the sign and remember that if you are solving let's say a trigonometry question or let's say a mensuration question and you have to sort of it's a multi-stage problem you know you have to first find out one length and then with the help of that length you have to find out the other length so the length that you find the intermediate value that's what we call it make sure that you keep that correct to at least four or five significant figures and you round off when you get to the end now i know there's a lot of debate about around rounding off but i've shown you guys in multiple examiner reports also that the candidates uh, the examiners want candidates to give the final answer correct to three significant figures unless stated otherwise. So please, please read the question, see if the question has a specific requirement. If it does, follow that. If it doesn't, then give it correct to three significant figures. And what answers? Only non-exact answers are to be given correct to three significant figures. Not exact answers. Once again, sorry about that. And uh, however, if we're talking about angles, angles are to be given correct to one decimal place unless it's a bearing um, yeah, unless stated otherwise, of course, unless the question says correct to the nearest degree or something like that. However, if it's a bearing question, then remember before the decimal, you got to have three digits. So for example, if it's 60.5, you need to write it as 060.5. Okay, so these are some rules that you need to follow. If you don't, you're giving the examiner the right to cut your mark. Also, don't do your paper in pencil, thinking that you will have enough time towards the end. You will definitely not if you are. And also, don't do any rough working on a separate piece of paper whatever working you have to do chances are it's probably something that you will be given credit for so do it on the question paper do it in the space that's provided to you okay now 
Also, be careful when solving our questions about limits of accuracy. My understanding is limits of accuracy hasn't been tested. So it may be tested in paper two of O-levels and paper four of IGCSC. So just read the question carefully. If the question is asking for upper bound, don't just brainlessly take upper bound of anything. If the question is asking for lower bound, don't just brainlessly take lower bound of everything. See what, uh, how you get what the question is asking for. So for example, if you're adding, you know, there's a rule for that. If you're subtracting, multiplying, dividing, there are separate rules for that. So make sure you follow those rules. Also, there are things that you can check in your calculator, like for example, if you're solving two simultaneous linear equations, you can check your answers. So make sure you do that, but please show your working, okay? So never at some point have I said that you don't need to show your working. I don't know why people think that's the case. You have to show your working, but you can use your calculator to check and feel good about it. Feel good about the fact that you've done it correctly. Same goes for quadratic equations. You can check your answer using your calculator, but you have to show your working. Also, when you have some questions that carry a lot of marks, it's always a good idea to plan your answer as to what should be the step-by-step -step procedure. It's okay if you can't think of it immediately, just identify some missing pieces of the puzzle, work towards that, and then eventually things will fall into place. Also, make sure that you look at the amount of space that you're given, and uh, then you start the question. So you, and irrespective of the amount of space you're given, make sure that you utilize the space efficiently. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's that I think is about it. Also, one thing that I always tell my students is that there are a lot of times that when we're sol solving, so for school going students especially, when you're solving a paper, there are steps that you skip because you're, and you, chances are that your teacher will probably give you marks for it because your teacher knows you and uh, the teacher knows that you've done so and so concept and you must be familiar with it. So your teacher will probably not be so strict but don't expect the examiner to give you the same leverage because for the examiner you're just a number and you have to communicate with the examiner using your working so if you're thinking something if something is in here make sure that you translate it on the piece of paper so that the examiner can give you credit for it don't just assume that the examiner will think good of you okay the examiner is just someone who is think of it this way uh, the checker the checker is someone who's getting paid to cut your marks okay so you have to make sure that you will give the checker absolutely no margin absolutely no room to cut your marks so make sure to be as elaborate if there is a question related to show that then make sure in the end you write that conclusive statement hence shown or uh, if the question says prove, so make sure in the end you write that conclusive statement. Be careful if you are, for example, if it's a similar triangles question and you're using a certain property, then make sure that you mention that property, like corresponding angles, alternating angles, vertically opposite, whatever that property is, make sure that you mention it. And you know, look for uh, if you are, let's say if there's a question related to circle properties, then uh, sometimes what we have to do is we have to change the order in which we think. So the usual order is that we look at the question, we try and identify a property. If that doesn't work, you think of a property, then you look at the question, you try and fit that property somewhere. Okay, so go over that. Uh, and uh, remember, if it's a one mark question, then no working is required. But if it's anything more than one mark, you need to show all the relevant working. It's something that I mentioned after paper one also. And uh, I guess that's, that's about it. So just stay hydrated. Don't do anything that's out of routine. Don't uh, eat a very heavy breakfast because you have your paper in the afternoon. It's gonna be unbearably hot, uh, at least in Karachi. I don't know about the rest of the cities. So yeah, you don't want to end up, God forbid, throwing up or something. So yeah, that's about it. In the end, I would just like to say that every piece of content or every video, live stream, anything that we ever made at Mathlete me and my team, the motive always behind was to benefit the students. And I hope that's the case. I hope every piece of content we shared, uh, you guys benefited from it. Now, at this time of the day, at this time of the year, I'm always thinking that, you know, I could have done more, I could have done this, but you know, uh, there's, there's no limit to it, honestly. But I hope the time, the window that we had this last uh, month and 45 days, uh, we tried our best to benefit you guys as much as you can. I hope you guys also made the most of it. So just remember us in your prayers, not just us as in the, the team of Mathlete, but also your parents, also everyone who has been a part of this journey. You know, there are so many people. Uh, the other day I was passing by the exam center and I saw drivers outside. I saw parents waiting outside and I was like, you know, uh, it's not just the students who sacrificed, the entire family has to sacrifice just so that students can do well in the exam. So just, just remember all, everyone who has been a part of this journey with you in your prayers and uh, just uh, pay them back however way you can through your prayers is the best way to do that and yeah that's what I wanted to say and in the end what I always say is 
that you know with with all the streams with all the content that i made i hope you guys took away more than just math and on that note inshallah i'll end this so i'll see you guys okay i was gonna say i'll see you guys in the next stream but i'll i'll, I'll definitely post a video asking guys how your exam went so do let me know and that's it for this one take care allah hafiz and good luck